Okay, this is Michael Von Flatern. I'm the senator from Gillette, Wyoming. Good afternoon, everybody. We'll go ahead and get started now. I want to welcome you, you to the CSG West webinar on improving species conservation in the West. As many in the West know, one of the most comprehensive conservation efforts in the history of the Western U.S. took place recently to avoid the listing of the sage grouse under the Endangered Species Act. And personally, my town and our state, state of Wyoming would have probably been more effective than anybody if this had happened. The success of the sage grouse conservation story led to an effort by the current chairman of the Western Governors Association, Governor Matt Mead, to create a mechanism for states to share best practices in species management and explore ways to improve the efficiency of the Endangered Species Act. We are extremely fortunate to have Governor Mead participating in the webinar. The governor will be adding remarks later in this webinar. To kick off the webinar, we have two excellent presenters. We have David Wilms, is a lead policy advisor on this project for Governor Mead. David has a Juris Doctorate and undergraduate degrees in wildlife and fisheries biology and management and environment and natural resources from the University of Wyoming. Zach Bodain is the lead policy advisor for the project with the Western Governors Association. Zach has managed the Species Conservation Initiative, other natural resources issues. Zach works on includes land exchanges, grazing, mining, and pilt funding. Zach holds a BS in natural resources management from Colorado State University. Following Zach and David's presentation, we will hear from Governor Mead and then open it up for questions. If you have any questions for any of our guests today during the webinar, webinar excuse me, please type it into the GoToWebinar interface at any time, which would be, should be the lower box. If you're looking at your computer screen, it should be on the lower right. With that, let's bring in Dave and Zach, who will talk to us about the process of the initiative, the themes that were presented for the governors of consideration, and the next steps. So with that, uh, Zach and David, your presentation. Thank you, Senator. My name is David Wilms. As the Senator said, I'm a policy advisor for Governor Mead here in Wyoming. And uh, I'll start with the next slide here. Uh, I, I just wanted to introduce uh, the endangered uh, species uh, initiative. Uh, Governor Mead was named the chair of the Western Governors Association last summer. And as as chairman, uh, he decided to take up for his initiative the uh, Endangered Species Act uh, specifically and, and also species conservation issues uh, more uh, more generally. And the, the reason why uh, he, he chose this initiative uh, is you know, in, in Wyoming, we value wildlife. You know, tourism is our second largest industry, and a big part of tourism in Wyoming is derived from its wildlife. Uh, but we've faced in the past, uh, well, several decades, frankly, a number of challenges related to endangered species uh, management in in Wyoming and in the West. And and Governor Mead cites to two examples pretty specifically. Uh, the first being uh, wolves, gray wolves in, in Wyoming in the West. You know, though they were originally introduced to Wyoming in the mid-1990s. Uh, before that, there were zero. Uh, today, we have nearly 400 wolves in, in Wyoming in Yellowstone Park and outside of the park and, and on the, uh, uh, the Wind River Reservation. Uh, we have exceeded all recovery goals and objectives, uh, wolf recovery goals and objectives, for over a dozen years. Uh, we've we've done everything uh, to recover the species. Uh, we've uh, we've been responsible stewards and managed them. Uh, and again, they've they've met objectives for over a dozen years. Yet they remain on the list. We've been involved since 2004 in five different lawsuits involving uh, involving wolves in one way or another. Uh, and the most recent one that is now on appeal before the uh, the D.C. Circuit. In the district court, uh, the judge that reinstated protection for the wolves refused to disagree with the service that the wolf had recovered. So we have a, a recovered species that, uh, 
by all accounts is a recovered species that still remains on the list. In order to get them off the list in Montana and Idaho, as many of you know, it took an act of Congress uh, to remove protections for a truly recovered species. So we, we in Wyoming and, and Governor Meade views this as a problem. Uh, the second species he often cites to are grizzly bears, where again, uh, the states have met recovery objectives for that species for over a dozen years. Uh, there's been a, a, already one attempt to delist uh, bears that has been uh, rebuked by the courts, and, and the service has now recently uh, issued a new proposed rule to delist bears. Uh, but we know that if we do get to the point where we have a final rule, we'll probably be back in court uh, uh, over whether it's appropriate to delist grizzly bears. Uh, so I'd go to the next slide as well. So that brings me to the, the third point, one of the challenges with the, the act. You know, right now there are 2,269 species listed under the Endangered Species Act between the United States and abroad. And I have in there a number 2246 from February, if you see this slide. The reason I have that in there is I gave a presentation on the Endangered Species Act in February, and, and that's how many species were listed in February. And if you go back six more months, it was closer to 2,200. So the, the number of species continue, listed continues to go up. Uh, but if you slide down that chart to the bottom, and you look at the total species ever delisted, which sits at 63, only 34 of those 63 have ever been delisted due to, due to the recovery of that species. Yet, I've just cited two examples of species that have, by all accounts, recovered yet remain on the list. So we, we have challenges with, with the act. You know, with 1.4 percent, as Governor Mead often says, 1.4 percent uh, success rate on recovering species is not success of the act. Yes, we're, species are not going extinct, which is certainly a purpose of the act, but the other purpose of the act is to recover species to the point that the protections of the act no longer apply, and in that way, you know, we're failing. And, and so that was really the reason behind uh, Governor Meade taking on this initiative. You know, we need to do better for species before they get to the point where, uh, where they're facing protections of the Endangered Species Act. We need more innovative, uh, uh, incentivized conservation solutions uh, like we had for sage-grouse that prevent the need to, lead, uh, to list species. And then we also need to be able to focus resources in a way that allows us to recover and delist species that are currently listed. You know, we're spent, we've spent over $40 million on recovery of grizzly bears in Wyoming alone, $2.5 million in, in 2015. That's money that could be used to go to truly imperiled species to help recover them. But because we face these, these challenges with implementation of the act, we're still spending that money on, on a recovered species to the detriment of all other listed species. Uh, so that's, that's really why. And why, why did he, he do this? Why did he announce this initiative? And why WGA? Why is that the appropriate vector for taking this on? Well, the Western Governors Association, as Zach will talk about uh, here in a minute, Western Association uh, or Western Governors Association is a uh, association, a, a bipartisan association of states, and this needs to be finding solutions, practical solutions to improving the Endangered Species Act and, and improving species conservation uh, in the West and the country is going to require a bipartisan effort. And who better to lead that effort in, in Governor Meade's mind than Western governors? And so that's why he selected the Western Governors Association, or why he, as his, as his initiative, uh, as the chair of the Western Governors Association, why he selected the Species Conservation and Endangered Species Initiative. And uh, I'll, I'll turn it over to, to Zach to talk more about the process of this initiative and, and what we uh, hoped to accomplish. Thank you, David. So I want to really quickly provide a little bit of context about the Western Governors Association, describe a little bit about who we are and what we do. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, next one. 
Thank you. The Western Governors Association represents governors of the 19 westernmost states and three U.S. wide peering islands. WJ all does all of the uh, typical association activities in terms of putting on meetings, writing reports, but first and foremost, we are a policy development and advocacy group. Our signal strength comes from our commitment to bipartisanship. It's threaded through everything we do. Uh, our chairmanship generally alternates on a bipartisan basis from year to year. Our resolutions require a bipartisan supermajority to be enacted, and I think, I think it shows in our work. Uh, we are a resolutions-based association. WGA policy resolutions are the governor's policy statements on issues and guide WGA staff efforts and work plan. Can we go to the next slide, please? As we talked about a little bit in the introduction by the senator, uh, Governor Matt Mead, and as his uh, in his year as chair of the Western Governors Association, decided to focus on the issues of species conservation and the Endangered Species Act. That took shape in the Western Governors Species Conservation and Endangered Species Act initiative. The initiative is designed uh, to provide a framework for states to share best practices in species management, promote and elevate the role of states in species conservation efforts, and explore ways to improve the efficacy of the Endangered Species Act. Now, the initiative involves an examination of the ESA, uh, to put it pretty simply, to determine what's working and what isn't. The effort, however, does go beyond a consideration of just the ESA and also looks to highlight innovations related to species conservation and through means by which state resources could be better leveraged. This broad, regional, bipartisan conversation is designed to yield recommendations for improvements to species conservation efforts and the ESA itself. Should we go to the next slide, please? So I want to talk a little bit about some of the various tools that we use to conduct this initiative. So one of those tools being a series of workshops conducted across the western U.S. The first workshop was held back in November of 2015 in Cody, Wyoming. The second workshop took place in January in Boise, Idaho. And the third workshop took place in Denver on March 9th and 10th. The final workshop occurred in Hawaii back in April. Now these workshops have been attended by a wide range of stakeholders ranging from state and federal fish and wildlife experts, conservation groups, industry, agriculture, recreation, um, the list goes on. All of that is really to say that this has been a very big tent conversation. We, it was, we're really inviting all comers to try to get as much perspective on these issues from as many different points of view as we possibly could. So going back to the workshops, the first workshop in Cody um, was based around some sector-specific panel discussions and the the intent with the Cody workshop was really just to try to paint the landscape of the issue and try to get uh, a sense from all these stakeholders on what the act means to them, how it's impacting work on the ground in various sectors, also look to highlight any potential improvements or areas where the efficiency might be increased, and also look to in a, uh, highlight innovations in species conservation. Moving from the Cody workshop, the Boise workshop was a little bit more narrowly focused and was designed to elicit input on some of these specific topics that were identified by the stakeholders in Cody. We used roundtable style discussions uh, that featured diverse groups of panelists from multiple different sectors that were all highlighting these issues that came up in Cody and trying to provide a little bit more depth and a little bit more insight into those issues. The Colorado Workshop, again, used these roundtable style discussions, but again, tried to dig even deeper into these issues. Um, the Colorado Workshop, we're really looking to provide some further discussion on feasibility and potential implementation strategies of some of these suggestions from previous workshops. We also devoted a lot of time to breakout discussions at that meeting, uh, which I'll get to in a little bit. But I want to go back to the Hawaii Workshop. This workshop was unique in that we used it to discuss coastal issues. So despite the workshop's location in Hawaii, it was not just a Hawaii-centric meeting. We had representatives from every coastal state in the West, in addition to some mainland folks and some folks from up in D.C., and we we're really trying to highlight the um, marine side of things and some of the, the issues that coastal states face that are, that are unique to them. So going back to the breakout sessions, each workshop did devote uh, ample time for facilitated breakout discussions. These were really meant to try to stimulate candid, uh, facilitated dialogue in an environment where uh, different points of view are really respected and listened to. 
So can we go to the next slide, please? Another tool I want to highlight is our webinar series. So these webinars we use to expand the reach of the conversation beyond just those who are able to attend the workshop meetings. So if through the webinar series, we really look to highlight certain case studies, look at innovations in species conservation, and also examine elements of the Endangered Species Act, which were discussed in workshop meetings. Um, the, the first webinar, we really focused on voluntary conservation incentives and collaboration in species conservation. And as, as you see on that slide there, we specifically looked at the reintroduction of the black-footed ferret in Colorado and Wyoming as a, as a real case study there of success. The second webinar, we looked at invasive species and their impact on habitat for rare and feral species. The third webinar focused on the role of litigation in the Endangered Species Act and also looked at how conflict has kind of shaped the act through its history. Fourth webinar, we focused on southwest uh, landscapes and desert ecosystems and also talked about aspects of landscape scale conservation efforts. And the final webinar, we focused on how to empower private landowners' conservation efforts. Um, so how do we facilitate those as, as they are essential for voluntary conservation moving forward? So that's, that's a quick overview of some of the tools. We, we employed a lot, more, uh, a lot more tools for outreach, um, but that's just a, a sample of what we did in terms of trying to solicit as much input and uh, analysis from stakeholders on this issue as we possibly could. So I think with all that said, I'd like to hand things back to David to talk about um, kind of the level of outreach that we had and, and the amount of engagement with the external parties that we had throughout the initiative. So David. Thanks, Zach. Um, yeah, I'd, go to, I'd go to the next slide, please. So first of all, we had broad, broad media coverage on, uh, on the initiative, every aspect of the initiative from its, its launch back in, uh, in August of 2015 uh, through all of the various workshops uh, and the webinars. Uh, what this slide shows is really just a sample, sample size of of the media coverage that the initiative received. Uh, it's, it's been in papers from coast to coast, from Hawaii to Washington, D.C. Um, Governor Mead even participated in a podcast with uh, Stephen Ranella, who is a, uh, a sportsman and runs a, uh, an, and best-selling author who, who runs a podcast on, on various uh, public lands and other natural resources issues. So the the amount of coverage that this received uh, was, uh, was, was pretty impressive. But in addition to that, it was the quality and the type of coverage that it received. Uh, because just about every article uh, highlighted the bipartisan nature and, and the way uh, that the Western Governors Association was going about uh, you know, putting together this initiative and running this initiative in a way that truly brought everybody to the table and made everybody's opinions valuable and matter. And so uh, the, the press on this uh, was, uh, uh, was, I can't understate the value of it. Uh, next slide, please. This next slide shows the type of engagement uh, outside of the media from those that participated in the process. Uh, again, this is just a sample size, a, a small sampling of the types and breadth of the groups that came to the table and were part of the discussion. Uh, in, in talking about ways to improve species conservation and ways to improve uh, the efficacy of the Endangered Species Act. And as you can see, looking through the list, it's about as diverse a group as you can get. You have some of the, uh, the, uh, the more notable uh, uh, environmental NGOs, and you have some of the energy companies, and you have ag groups, and you have forestry groups, and you have state government, local government, federal government, uh, you have uh, sportsmen, um, you have academia, uh, you have uh, engagement from uh, the congressional level as well. So uh, the, the engagement was broad. It was not limited to the western United States. We had a, 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 an awful lot of participation uh, from groups all over the country. Uh, and, and I think that spoke to uh, the, uh, the quality of the dialogue uh, and the quality of the initiative that, uh, that Governor Mead was leading at the Western Governors Association uh, put together. Uh, this was a, uh, you know, 
I think we, we, I mean, we strongly believe this is one of the strongest dialogues, one of the uh, best dialogues that we've seen on the Endangered Species Act and species conservation in a very long time, one of the more productive dialogues. So you know, when you see all of these uh, all of these groups come to the table, and I sometimes joke, you had all these folks come to the table and not one punch was thrown. I mean, it was, you know, the, the dialogue was civil and productive and generated thoughtful, uh, uh, pragmatic uh, solutions uh, to make species conservation work better. In addition to these groups, uh, Zach and, and others at WGA and, and myself uh, with Governor Mead's office have traveled around the country you know, presenting and uh, about this initiative, uh, trying to inform folks about why we're doing this, what we hope to accomplish, uh, and, and a lot of what we're doing here today. And so uh, the engagement goes beyond this list and people that actually were in the room. It, it goes to to people that were in other rooms that we were presenting to, uh, and other dialogue that we've had. Um, after every uh, after every session, participants were given a questionnaire. Uh, in addition to uh, all the participation they did during the workshop, they were given a questionnaire and asked to provide additional uh, feedback and thoughts on on ways to improve species conservation and ways to improve the Endangered Species Act. And the response response that we received from participants there. Uh, it w was very in-depth and thoughtful and, and very helpful in the process as well. So the, the engagement is, is uh, it, it, it's very comprehensive uh, and very inclusive. Uh, next slide, please. To give you a sense about the type of engagement that we had in, in webinars and workshops in particular, uh, this slide is intended to do that. Uh, we had, uh, as Zach said, four, uh, four workshops and five webinars. You can see the live participation in the top left of the, uh, the four workshops. Uh, but those workshops were also live streamed, so you could watch them uh, through the WGA website or through YouTube. You could watch uh, and participate live in that discussion at the workshop if you weren't able to attend in person. They were also saved on YouTube and you can still watch them today. And you can see as you move to the third, uh, the third row, uh, the post-participation YouTube engagement, you can see that that engagement is very high. Uh, and the same thing for webinars. You can see that as a webinar is completed that folks weren't, that weren't able to participate live are going back and watching these webinars on YouTube and we're getting good engagement that way as well. And so you can see just for the webinars and the workshops alone that the, the participation was uh, 5,800 people, uh, which is pretty impressive when you consider that those individuals often are representing organizations that can rep that represent whether it's hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of people. Uh, and, and those groups would send out updates in their newsletters to their membership. Uh, so the message of this, w of this initiative uh, has really spread to, to all corners of the country. Uh, and, and I think we're, we're very, very pleased with, with what we've received uh, it, by way of feedback and participation at this point. And, uh, Next slide. I don't know if there's another one here or not. Yeah. So, so the last slide here really is to just uh, I showed you the types of groups that are represented, but this this slide shows you what types of interests were represented. As I mentioned, uh, it, it included a, a very uh, diverse group of interests that came to the table and and shared their ideas in a very thoughtful and productive way, uh, which really helped inform uh, the, the Western Governors Association and the Western Governors themselves on uh, future policy uh, positions and recommendations uh, uh, for purposes of species conservation in the Endangered Species Act. And so with that in mind, I'll, I'll turn it over back over to Zach now 
uh, to talk some more about uh, some of the themes that, that came out of these discussions uh, and, and from all of these participants and, and where we're going from here. Thanks, David. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? And I apologize for the uh, typo at the top. There's just seven key themes when there's only six, so I apologize about that. Um, a little bit on some of the outcomes of the initiative and some of the, the next steps looking forward. So the ultimate goal of this initiative is to create an action plan for WGA and partners uh, with the long-term objective of improving the effectiveness and the efficiency of the act. Uh, to do that, as, as we've described on this uh, webinar a little bit, we are collecting and synthesizing an enormous amount of input and information. Uh, that input will inform the development of future WGA policy on the ESA and species management. Additionally, a final report detailing some of the um, detailing some of the um, occurrings of the initiative will be delivered to the governors at our annual report uh, at our annual meeting rather in Jackson Hole this June. Uh, this report will go through a little bit of the process of how we got all this information. It will also include some aggregated input that we've gotten from all the various stakeholders that have taken part in this initiative. And additionally, the WGA does have a current policy resolution on the ESA. Uh, that resolution is set to expire this summer, actually, concurrent with our annual meeting in Jackson. So I think it's not a stretch to say that this initiative uh, will and will likely continue to inform the development of that resolution and WGA policy actions following that resolution. Um, some, of the, some of the themes that have come out of this initiative are shown on the slide there. And what's, what really amazed me when we were starting to go through all this information is that these themes came out across a complete bipartisan range of organizations. While some of the individual um, thoughts and perspective on how to approach these issues did differ, these themes were pretty much unanimously across the board of all the sectors identified and consistently brought up as the areas that we really need to focus on going forward with this initiative and ultimately looking at the ESA in general. So in, in no particular order, some of these themes, uh, one that came up a lot was incentivizing voluntary conservation. It's it's how do you how do you provide these incentives and be proactive with voluntary conservation to avoid even having to use the ESA in the first place? Uh, another consistent theme that came up was the role of state and local governments in species conservation and ESA implementation. Um, so there was a lot of discussion on Section Six of the Endangered Species Act and how to more thoroughly engage states and, and make them more genuine partners, but also how to engage local governments. And we, we heard a lot from county commissioners of uh, a lot of the really amazing work going down at the local level and, and how to bring that into the spotlight and, and really work to progress those initiatives. Um, also, there we heard a lot about landscape level conservation and ecosystem management strategies. So rather than taking a species by species approach to species conservation, uh, really looking at the landscape as a whole and trying to focus on habitats and ecosystems and keeping species healthy as a result of keeping those landscapes healthy. Another common theme that came up and is really threaded throughout uh, kind of all of these themes and is fundamental to all of these themes is investment in science and measurable outcomes. So it's, it's not only discussing uh, how to fund science and, and how to leverage resources better, but really looking at how to make sure our conservation is being uh, measured, is being credited, and, and looking at that going forward. Uh, we looked a lot at the just the process of the ESA itself, so that from list just some, from petitioning all the way to delisting. We looked at in depth in all of those processes and discussed uh, critical habitat, all of that, um, and, and really received a tremendous amount of input on some specific areas within the Act that could be changed to improve the efficacy of it. And finally, uh, kind of broadly stated as law and policy recommendations, there is uh, this, this really focused on a lot of the talk about how litigation has shaped the Act and what, what can be done to um, address litigation going forward and how to be more collaborative about things going forward. And uh, also looking at some potential tweaks to the ESA either through statutory changes or through administrative 
rulemaking changes. Um, so I think that, that, that I really just wanted to touch on them quickly and not go into too much depth, but there, there is just a uh, immense amount of information on these on these specific themes that we've received from really across the board a broad set of stakeholder groups. So these these are going to be continued uh, to be discussed going forward. We're going to think about them as we progress into years two and three of this initiative and um, following a policy resolution on the Endangered Species Act that will set up the development of a WGA work plan to continue efforts this initiative and continue this amazing momentum that we built up. Um, and I think with that, I will turn it back over to David. Uh, thanks, Zach. Actually, I, I so I'll I'll ask you a question, Zach, um, because I think there might be some value in having you go into a little bit more depth about uh, the next steps and process with WGA. Uh, you know, what, what's going into the report? Uh, a little bit more discussion about the annual meeting and and. Uh, uh, thoughts on what that work plan uh, you know, might look like. Um, so, if I if I could, I'd I'd love you to spend a couple more minutes on that. And then the governor, I just got a text, and the governor will be be joining in about four minutes. I just don't want to I don't want to steal the governor's thunder. I want him to talk about his vision for uh, for where this this goes. Sure. Thanks, David. Uh, could we actually go to the next slide, please? So as, as David mentioned, um, and I, I referenced it in my remarks, the Western Governors Association annual meeting is around the corner, um, June 12th through 14th in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. So as I, as I mentioned, we'll be presenting a report to the governors on the first year of this initiative. And what's going into that report is some of what we've discussed today, just really detailing the process uh, and, and trying to be methodical about um, how how we structured this initiative to really provide the most robust, bipartisan, complete input um, that we that we received, and, and really trying to portray that. So the report will walk through some of the workshops. Um, it'll touch on what some of the panel discussions were. It'll it'll mention some of the themes that came up in the breakout discussions, and we really wanted to make sure that we weren't omitting anyone's voice from this. So I, I think we're going to have a pretty robust appendix on the report that will contain a lot of uh, some of the discussion that occurred at these meetings. So if, 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 you're, if you're really interested in a specific issue, you can flip to the back and read kind of the landscape of discussion that was had on that issue at that specific meeting. So we'll, we'll go through the meetings, talk a little bit about those, um, go a little bit more into depth on the webinars, discuss some of the, the back and forth on those, kind of the range of questions that we got, some, some of the discussion there, and also provide a little bit of insight. And, and this will all be aggregated um, and, not, and not attributed to any specific folks in, unless they specifically request that it be attributed to them. But we'll also go through some of the questionnaire responses and show what the questions were on that questionnaire, the range of responses from the different sectors that we got. Uh, so this is really just trying to paint the clearest, most complete picture that we can, and um, try to be transparent about all of the input that we, re we received and um, bring that to the governors for their potential decisions in the future on this issue. So that brings me to the development of an Endangered Species Act WGA policy resolution. So as I mentioned, the current ESA resolution is expiring this summer. Uh, we are looking to potentially renew the uh, ESA resolution, which would be presented at the annual meeting coming up in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Um, these, these policy resolutions are, and this specifically will be informed by all of this work that we've done in the past year, and really try to take into account all of the uh, variety of input that we've received from different stakeholder groups. And that policy resolution will contain some specific policy statements on the ESA. Uh, made by Western governors that will uh, pertain to a, a variety of different things, both inside the Act and essentially outside of the Act, looking at these uh, voluntary conservation. And, and, and this, this resolution will be the governor's policy statement on um, the ESA coming out of the first year. So following the adoption of, or potential adoption of an ESA resolution, then we can look 
And, and, and as I mentioned in my opening remarks, we are resolutions-based as an organization. So these resolutions really um, paint the or, or set, set the field with which we can play. And so once that resolution has been adopted, we can go through, create a work plan for future years of effort on this initiative. Um, and, and, I, and I, without going into too much detail since we have not set the work plan yet specifically, it's safe to say that we will try, um, not try, I think, I think it will be imperative that we keep the coalition together that we've built and, and really try to keep the discussion going and keeping these folks engaged. So I think that's going to be a big emphasis with the work plan. Zach, Zach this, this is David. Um, I, I hate to interrupt you, but I, uh, I understand that the governor is on the phone and, and available to give remarks, and I wanted to be able to uh, to turn it over to to him and 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 thank the governor for taking the time to visiting with us uh, today. So at this oh, time, this is Senator, this is Senator Michael von Flader, and I believe the governor is with us. So thank you, Dave and Zach, for your presentation. Uh, governor Mead, if you're online, please go ahead. Thank you, Senator. Thank you very much. Thank you all for giving me a little bit of your time, and uh, thank you for the work that you do. I wanted to, uh, one, um, provide, uh, just get a few minutes to talk about my initiative as uh, chairman of the Western Governor Association, which, as you all know, and has been explained, the Endangered Species Act. I can tell you that um, it's been interesting to me in my role uh, as governor uh, and the work that we've done in Wyoming, which it may be somewhat unique to Wyoming, but certainly it's not unique to the Endangered Species Act. The wolves are a case study where you have over a decade where we've met all uh, criteria for recovery and we're still trying to get the species delisted. What's been remarkable for me as we started this initiative, um, the amount of bipartisan support, the amount of focus and interest by NGOs and individuals, and I certainly am just can't express enough how I'm pleased with the caliber and the depth of discussion that's occurred at the workshops. Um, and the ideas that we have received that have helped to inform and help us develop a, a Western Governors Resolution that I'm going to ask the Western Governors to support next month uh, during the annual meeting in, in Jackson, Wyoming. And I've said from the beginning that I think this is such an important issue for predictability for the planning process the local level, the county level, uh, the state level for the interaction uh, with our federal partners but it's also, frankly, very important to the species. When you recognize that the act uh, came into effect in 1973 and less than 1.5% of the species that have been listed have now been delisted, I think all recognize that we can do better to provide the predictability uh, for planners and for business. And frankly, we can do a lot better for species as well. And so my hope is that we are able, uh, through the good work of so many, getting to this point to have a resolution to present to the Western governors, that we can get that passed. But I certainly do not want it to, to stop at that point. I want to see Western Governors Association uh, and individual Western governors uh, work uh, more broadly to take it to the National Governors Association level, where I'm currently the chair of the Natural Resources Committee. Uh, and I want to see if we can go from Western governors to national governors, and to the extent that we can get changes made in the act with Congress, uh, we'll be able to present not only WGA support, NGA support, I think a lot of county support, uh, but also uh, NGO support, and to tell Congress this is not uh, some extreme vision from Republicans or Democrats. It is a bipartisan effort to say species are important to the West, species are important to the country, that we need to do better. We need to know where the finish line is and to know how to get there and to be able to have that productive opportunity at the state level to help get to the finish line. And so it is, uh, when we started this, we certainly heard from many who said, you know, it's, it's been tried before and not really changes can be made. But I sincerely believe with the support of the Council of State Governments, uh, with Western Governors, uh, hopefully the National Governors Association, that we can present a, a very uh, concerted effort and well-considered effort from many different viewpoints to Congress to get necessary changes made to the Endangered Species Act. I personally feel that uh, with all the challenges that we face in Western states with public lands and, and, and management uh, with species, 
that one of the most uh, uh, one of the best goals that we could have is to see uh, positive changes for the Endangered Species Act, as I said, not only uh, for governments and business, but particularly for the species. So we so much appreciate, Senator, uh, the Council of State Governments, uh, the opportunity for this webinar, and certainly the opportunity for me to share some of my thoughts. And we ask for the support, uh, bipartisan support, to try to make very important changes to an act um, that is in need of fine-tuning. So with that, uh, Senator, I thank you. And I thank uh, all who are on the webinar for the opportunity to share some of my views. And uh, we look forward to support or any feedback uh, you may have. Well, thank you, Governor Mead. We appreciate your time today. And uh, if you have a moment for questions, we'll ask the panelists. Otherwise, thank you, and thank you for your vision and putting, putting this initiative in place. Well, thank you, Senator. I, I do have a, a few minutes for questions. If there's uh, some questions, we'd be happy to try to field those questions. And panelists, does anybody have a question? I don't see any in particular in the uh, chat box. I don't think there is any questions for you, Governor. I think David and Zach did a great job in presenting the uh, presenting your initiative and presenting what happened. Thank you very much, David, Zach. Uh, thank you, and uh, Senator again. Thank you, and thanks to the council. I appreciate the time very much. Thank you, Governor. Does anybody else have any questions for the panelists, uh, David or Zach? If not, uh, this. I want to thank all our guests for joining us this afternoon, and thanks also to everyone who logged in today to join us. I'm not sure there was anybody, but if there was, thank you. Um, that's about it.